President Biden is set to visit the southern border for the first time since taking office. Biden will meet with Mexico's president at the North American Leaders Summit in Mexico City next week. And reports say he could make a stop in the border town of El Paso, Texas. Now, Biden has not visited the southern border during his administration. This despite an influx of migrant crossings and an uptick in illegal drugs pouring into the U.S. Here's what Biden had to say. Listen. My message is this. If you're trying to leave Cuba, Nicaragua, or Haiti, you have, and we, or have agreed to begin a journey to America, do not, do not just show up at the border. Stay where you are and apply legally from there. Starting today, if you don't apply through the legal process, you will not be eligible for this new parole program. And to talk more about this, I'd like to bring in Victor Avila, former ICE HSI agent, to break it all down. Victor, as always, good to see you. We've got a lot to get to. So during this press conference today, it was a little confusing. There was a lot to take in. I know you were watching it as well. Biden administration will begin expelling Venezuelans, Cubans, Nicaraguans, and Haitians who cross into the U.S. illegally. But they will also admit 30,000 pre-approved migrants per month into the U.S. from these countries. Now, they're going to be doing it via parole, and they'll allow them to work in the U.S. for two years. What does all this mean, and what do you make of it? Well, it's mass confusion to begin with, but I'll tell you what it's not. It's not border security. This is not a, a policy that's going to secure our southern border. You and I have been talking about these paroles, and uh, apparently we were right, and they have been paroling. This is nothing new. They have been paroling individuals from the Mexican side into the United States, and now they just basically made it official. But what if, what if it's, it's more than 30,000? Just last month, we had over 230,000 individuals come from precisely most of these countries that you mentioned. And so what's gonna happen when that number exceeds 30,000? And so this is not uh, a policy that's gonna reduce people from coming in. All they're telling them is don't come in between uh, the ports of entry, don't come wade the, the Rio Grande River, come through the port of entry and we're gonna allow you to come into this country which is illegal to be providing these paroles at this point. Why do you think he's focused on Venezuela, Cuba, Nicaragua and Haiti? Because those are the, the, the mass numbers that we see mostly uh, down at the border. The last times that I visited myself, those are the individuals that we see. And um, they'll, they'll make the uh, argument that, uh, you know, they're coming from these communist, socialist countries. But keep in mind the asylum claims here. This is where uh, they're, they're, they're using this uh, and convoluting this, this word with, with, uh, with our asylum claims and these loopholes in allowing them in, but uh, you have to be persecuted by your government, and a lot of these individuals do not qualify. Even the ones coming uh, that are Venezuelan, that claim they're Venezuelan, they might be Venezuelan nationals, but most of them have not lived in Venezuela for several years. I have talked to them myself. They've, they've been in surrounding countries for four or five years, even longer than that. Some have been in Mexico for a long time. And so uh, you have to really have the opportunity to vet each individual and what their circumstance is. And the Border Patrol agents don't have the opportunity to do that because of the numbers. So Republicans and many Democrats, they've called on Biden to visit the border. Now he says he has the intentions and it appears that's gonna happen this Sunday. What will change? What you think will happen from the visit? What do you say? Nothing, nothing's nothing. gonna change, Stella. Um, I'm born and raised in El Paso, Texas, and I could tell you firsthand, you can visit El Paso, Texas, the city, and not be at the border. And that's exactly what Biden border uh, visit's gonna be. And I predict that he will be in the city of El Paso, but you will not see the border wall behind him. He will be nowhere near a port of entry, uh, nowhere near uh, downtown El Paso. They're, they're filling up that brand new facility that they just built last week so they will not be seen. They don't want to be seen anymore. They want to get them out of sight because even the locals are, are very concerned with security measures and other things going on with illegals roaming around the city of El Paso, one of the safest cities uh, year after year uh, uh, around the country. And so you're not going to see that behind Biden. He'll probably somewhere be at the airport or away from the downtown area or the, or the backdrop where the border yeah. is. And it's going to change nothing that what, whatsoever. What, at that point, what's the point? What's the point of even going? Um, cartel leader and son of El Chapo, Ovidio Guzman, has been arrested. Uh, I got to ask you, why does the capture of El Raton matter? This is very important. And uh, I want people to understand that when, um, when things like this happen in Mexico, it matters and we should pay attention because it has a ripple effect to us here in this country. 
And this arrest, although significant in a way because he's El Chapo's son, he's not the biggest uh, drug lord out there. He's probably the most vulnerable one uh, of, of, the, of the sons. But um, it, it, either way, it's impactful. It's good. But guess what? It happens at a timing when uh, Biden is going to go to Mexico and visit next week. And so it, to me, it's just so much of a convenience that Mexico will get to say, look, this is what our war against the cartels. We are doing something about it. But let me tell you what's happening with this. Uh, the Sinaloa cartel is not backing down. They were shooting at the aircraft that was taking uh, this prisoner back to Mexico City. I mean, this is crazy stuff that, that, that you only see in uh, type of Middle East type of war zones. But this is happening in Mexico. And uh, the people in Culiacán, Sinaloa, are at, at danger. They're the ones that are really suffering at the hands of these terrorists, which I consider them to be. And, uh, uh, and where are they? What, what's going on? What's, what's the ripple effect happening and, and the cause to us? Well, they're the ones responsible for bringing the meth and the, the fentanyl to our communities throughout the country. And it's only going to strengthen the other faction of the Sinaloa cartel and the Cartel Jalisco New Generation. And so um, it's convenient for Mexico politically to say they're doing something, but overall, in the scheme of things, it's not going to change anything. But also, not only that, but a lot of people, they're not very optimistic. If you look at the, the comments online, people are saying it's a matter of time when before he's released. That's good. And I'll, and I'll cite you the, what happened two years ago. Um, HSI, along with the Mexican government, had a provisional arrest warrant. And I used to work these type of warrants when I was in Mexico to arrest the other brother. And the Sinaloa cartel uh, took him and threatened to kill uh, normal citizens around uh, Sinaloa and to kill the cartel, uh, the uh, military members uh, in the barracks. And uh, the president of Mexico was forced to release them. So this happened, and this happens all the time. Last time the president of Mexico traveled to Washington, D.C., they arrested Rafael Caro Quintero, who was responsible for killing a DA agent, Kike Camarena, back in 1985. He got arrested conveniently right before the visit. But guess what? He's now in house arrest. So uh, it wouldn't be surprised that he gets released here soon or somehow he disappears in the system. Yeah. Victor Avila, thank you as always. And we'll see if you're right about Sunday and Biden's trip to El Paso. I'll be watching closely. Thank you. Good Thanks to see you as always. For all our viewers asking where One America News is heading in the future, we would like to introduce you to OAN Live. OAN Live is the best way to stay up to date on all of the hard-hitting, straight-shooting, national and international headlines. And the best part is, OAN Live is only $4.99 per month. All the credible, honest, unbiased reporting One America News offers at a fraction of the cost of cable. Just go to OANN.com to easily sign up for OAN Live and stay informed.